Hello friends, Doug Fink. I'm going to talk today about the PowerShell AI module. I've integrated the Azure OpenAI services. So if you want to learn about how to use your own private enterprise version, we'll take a look. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell so you can know when I put out new videos about this and other topics. Let's go. Okay, so Microsoft uh, went general availability on Azure OpenAI service, and you can spin up OpenAI, and it has all the models that, uh, almost all the models that the public OpenAI has. Uh, they'll be bringing more of them online, and as OpenAI improves and put out, puts out new stuff, they will incorporate that into uh, Azure. Of course, there'll be a lag time because they have to get everything set up and bring it in. So what I did was I integrated access to Azure OpenAI into the PowerShell AI module I have, and you can do both. You can talk to either OpenAI or you can talk to Azure AI. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So last time I showed that I have something called chat. So if you download the module, check out the, the uh, description below links to how to download it, where the GitHub repo is, where the other videos I have, etc. So if you download PowerShell AI, set up a key, this is going to initially talk to the public open AI models. Uh, and I say, what's the capital of Spain? I think you notice a couple things. One is it gives an answer. The capital of Spain is Madrid. And I have my profile set up so that I can tell when I'm chatting. And I can tell what provider I'm working with as well as what model I'm working with. So here you see I'm working with GPT-4. Uh, all that stuff is settable. I'll show you some of those in a bit. So um, we'll do another, you know, we can do chat in France. So this is having a conversation uh, with OpenAI. It's different than the text in, text out versions of um, the older versions of GPT. Uh, this is actually having remembering and having memory and context of how this operates uh, of the conversation I'm having so that the, the models can actually respond based on a, con a conversation. So let's take a look at uh, Azure OpenAI. So I'm still chatting and here you can see there's a bunch of things you need to do. One, you need to go spin it up. So if you go to my blog, you can see how to spin it up. I have links to um, other articles from Microsoft and other folks that show you how to set it all up, set up an instance, not that difficult. And once you get there, I show you how to, I talk about how you can grab these four pieces of information. You want to grab the endpoint, you want to grab the deployment name of, where, of what you deployed, what models you deployed, and then API version uh, that you can use as a default now that'll change over time as they improve things. They'll put out different API versions, but for now you can use that. Last but not least is the API key. So I'm going to run this and um, notice it runs. And now my prompt shows that I'm talking to OpenAI and I'm using DCF OpenAI models as specified up top. And now I can just do the same thing. I can ask questions about Spain in France. So this is uh, the model I'm using. That's the name I deployed it under, but it's actually using 3.5, I think, turbo underneath. Uh, they just recently, I think, put GPT-4 in. Um, what I have in my subscription, I only have 3.5, but that's not that important. You can upgrade and switch between them as time goes on. Uh, just to show a cool thing, you can also do new chat. I can say respond only with JSON. So I can say, um, so that actually resets the conversation. So let's do Spain and then we can do France. And notice it's coming back as JSON and oops, USA. If I want, I can get the chat messages that I've been working with. I keep track of that. I also put it on your local disk. Uh, the transcript so you can come back to it later and last but not least um, uh, we can just we 
can ask chat to show all at once. And what's cool, it remembers the conversation. Here we have what it's doing. Um, it's a fence block and we have a properly created object with what we talked about or what I asked it about capitals. Now this is 3.5 GPT-4 doesn't give the titles, doesn't give the fence blocks, just gives the raw response in, in JSON. So it's cool because you can see the differences between 3, 5, and 4. Anyway, go grab the module, set up your uh, open your Azure OpenAI instance up, up there. It's uh, enterprise level, it's secure. What I'm typing here only goes back to my instance. So if I was sending personal information or company information, it would only go to Azure, which is locked down, ready to go. You can go read about how far, how locked down it is, if it's enough for you. So until then, until my next video, thanks for joining.